Hoffman. I'm at Atkins Arboretum today and I want to introduce you to the ironwood tree, Carpinus caroliniana. Sometimes it's called the musclewood tree because of its beautiful muscled bark. Other common names for the tree include American hornbeam and ironwood. The wood is very hard and heavy, weighing 49 pounds per square foot when dry, compared to pine, which is 10 pounds lighter per square foot. It's also called blue beech or water beech, as it doesn't mind wet soils and its bark resembles beech bark. You can find musclewood growing in anything really, from sun to shade and wet to dry soils, but it does have some preference for shady stream sides. Native to eastern North America, from Canada to Florida and west to Texas, musclewood is in the Betulaceae or birch family. It's most closely related to hazelnuts and to Ostrea virginiana, also called ironwood. I'm going to use the name musclewood here for Carpinus caroliniana to avoid confusion. Let's look at the beautiful form of the trunk and its smooth gray bark. Donald Colross Petey in The Natural History of Trees describes it thus, the smooth bark seems to be corrugated with some sort of swelling or twisting inside the wood itself, as if the life within showed itself proudly, as a young man will flex his arm in the joy of its strength. Trees may be single-trunked or multi-trunked, and often have a fork in the trunk not too far off the ground. As a side note, researchers from New Jersey collected 150 species of microfungi from samples of bark from 50 musclewood trees in their search for potential biotechnological applications. Maybe the slug was after some of those microfungi. The leaves are arranged alternately along the stem and are two to four inches long with double toothed edges. The upper side is a dull green and on the underside, if you look closely, you can see little tufts of white hairs where the veins meet the midrib of the leaf. The leaves support about 68 species of butterflies and moths, including the red-spotted purple shown here, as well as other types of insects. The twigs often appear to zigzag and are occasionally browsed by deer and rabbits. Rabbits and beaver will also eat the inner bark from the trunks of Carpinus. In the spring, separate male and female catkins flower just as the leaves begin to appear. A catkin is a grouping of petalless flowers in a spike that hangs down. In the case of Carpinus, the flowers are wind pollinated. A dangling cluster of nutlets form, each with a leafy bract that may aid in wind dispersal. The nutlets are three-sided and contain a single seed. Musclewood trees have what are called mass years every three to five years where they produce large numbers of seeds. The seeds are eaten by ruffed grouse, turkey, bobwhites, yellow rump warblers, fox, and squirrels, and they may help disperse the seeds further than the wind would. By only producing large quantities of seeds every few years, trees may be protecting themselves from a continual rise in the populations of animals that eat their seeds. Seedlings are very shade tolerant. But as the tree grows, it becomes less tolerant of shade and requires a gap in the canopy to reach reproductive maturity. It not infrequently takes 15 years of growth before a tree will begin to even produce seeds. Trees can live to be 100 years old, but in tree years, that means it's not a very long-lived tree. Although musclewood is too small to have ever been a popular tree for forestry purposes, its hard wood is favored by woodworkers for certain projects. William Wood in New England's Prospects, published in 1634, wrote, is a tough kind of wood that requires much pains in riving as it is almost incredible, being the best to make bowls and dishes not subject to crack or leak. It has also been used to make levers and handles for tools. The Woodworkers Institute says, it's a looker. Hornbeam is almost white, patterned with lovely flecks and swirls in its grain. When well finished, it is very smooth and often compared to ivory. In Europe, hornbeam trees were coppiced for making charcoal. Musclewood makes a lovely small tree for the home landscape as well, although it can be difficult to transplant because of broad spreading roots. Try to find plants grown in containers to plant. 
Its form and bark look lovely in the winter months. It offers light shade in summer, and in the fall, the leaves often turn colors from yellow to orange, depending on the tree.